good evening and welcome to the programme. Great to be back in the studio this week uh, and I'm absolutely delighted to welcome uh, Yorkshire's most high riding manager in any of the tables at this moment in time and also in Sheffield terms the the newest manager on the block. Good evening to uh, the manager of championship leaders currently anyway yeah. fingers crossed <coughs> Sheffield United Paul Heckingbottom. Nice of you to come in Paul. No pleasure Alan. Yeah, good to be here. Pleasure. Paul I've addressed you as Paul everybody else addresses you as Hecky mm. or do they? Yeah, except the wife. That's some another different name there. But no, yeah, yeah, heck yeah, it's up, it's stuck in it. It's always been there. So I'm be careful because David Moyes uh, picked apart a journalist the other day who addressed him as Moisey. No, I, he, I don't, there's too many people call me uh, Hecky for me to be. You sign upset off your about it. You sign off your program notes that way. Yeah, yeah, it's easier, it's shorter than Hecky Bottom, isn't it? So it, it's, listen, it's always been there. Everyone knows me as that. So. Are you happy with that? Yeah, fine. Yeah, and it's great because otherwise a tweet would, uh, you know, of 240 characters would be, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. wouldn't be able to get past your name. So we're, we're grateful to call you Hecky. But what do the players call you to your face? Yeah, mix, mix of boys. It's funny, probably the senior boys are more, are more gaffer or boss, and then the younger boys, especially the academics, obviously, I'm always hanging about there, know a lot of them, and they've always known it as, as Hecky. So, yeah, there's a mixture. Uh, are you happy with the academy boys calling you? Yeah, it's no problem. Yeah, it's just a name, isn't it? I think. Yes, and you automatically get uh, because of your position, you get people look at you different. You know, get used to that. Uh, so, what difference does a does a name make? Really, I think it's more about how you behave and what standards you set. Really, is is. Uh, more like the people are going to follow you that way rather than what name they call you. So, yeah, yeah it's honestly, it's it's irrelevant really for me. It makes no difference. Yeah. Okay, well, always grounded. Barnsley boy will always be uh, grounded, even from uh, top of the table. Going back, I mean, I've, I've worked out. I think you've played for ten football clubs, including some on loan, mm. and have managed four, which is not bad going for forty-five years of age, is it? You've yeah. lived a bit you, in football. Yeah, listen, that's what it's about. It's um, and, and every one of those things, every one of those clubs have been good or you take something from it when, you, uh, when you're playing. Certainly for, the biggest thing for me when I was playing was to play. You know, the, yeah. when I ended up moving, it was generally because playing opportunities, I would have either felt they were going to be less or dwindling um, or, the, or they had. So I just wanted to play and that, that was, you know, rightly or wrongly, you know, walking away from contracts but to play. But, uh, see, now I don't regret anything from it because met some great people, played some good clubs, had some success, experienced some tough times as well, and then, um, yeah, it's um, all brings you to where you are now. Yeah, that's an attitude that isn't um, across the board. I think with you know many a manager I've spoken to has said, well, players would rather sit on a contract than go out on loan or go and play. Do you still find that? Yeah, my contracts weren't that. Wouldn't that big that to be, uh, yeah, yeah, to be worth sitting on. No, it's no. I think every, every player wants to play, regardless. And certainly, the profession's held up as everyone wants to be a footballer. How lucky we are to be involved in football, and that's true. That's right. Um, but it doesn't that doesn't protect you from the the lows that you can experience as well. Where when you're playing, the loss of form, um, being out of the team, and manager not picking us, particularly injuries. I really struggled with injuries. You know, dealing mm. with them and. And feeling like I couldn't do anything to influence yeah. and get in the team. When you were when you were dropped, you could train well and get in the team. When you were injured, really struggled with that. Some people don't uh, get. I think that it is about playing and, and players. It's about the challenge. It's about um, the Saturday afternoon. So, yeah, he, there's some tough moments definitely when you're playing. Mm. Has coaching and managing come naturally to you? Is it something you envisage doing as a player? Yeah, before I played, uh, I always thought I'd be a manager. Um, but I think experiences in the game, I sort of moved away from it. It was when Macca was my manager at, at Rotherham, at Barnsley, at Bradford, sorry. And, um, yeah, Stuart McCall, yeah. Yeah, and, and Dave Weatherall and Wayne Jacobs were there, and I knew them from my first spell at Bradford. And they knew then I'd done, would do my badges, but I, I'd sort of come away from it um, because of people experiences and I'm like, do you know what? I've had enough of these people. 
and I, and I started doing some plumbing, things like that, just for when I packed in. And, and it was those weathers in particular, so why don't you get back on with your badges and get qualified and get in charge and help to and, and employ good people and help to get rid of the ones who you say shouldn't be in the game. So yeah. honestly, that sentence stuck with me and from that moment, <clears throat> I was injured at the time and little did I know that was going to be sort of the end of me in the Football League. Um, but that stuck with me, that. And, uh, what was so the spirit again. in you? Why were you getting fed up? Just some of the people. Some of the people so around maybe, the Maybe it was where I was as well, like I said, with, with injuries and stuff. And yeah. Just some of the people, some of the managers or coaches I'd worked with for... Um, I'm not going to say journalists or reporters. Hey, you could do if you want. Yeah, no, no, no just, just that, did I want to try something fresh, something different, something new. Um, but that, on that conversation, or so those conversations, yeah, they, they just stuck with me. Did, did you not feel it. you were well managed at times then in, in your career? No, or I you weren't. Didn't? There's loads of man. You, you're not going to get on with every manager, you know. Yeah. Um, you're not. Uh, but yeah, just yeah, I don't, I don't know. What it was like I said, it could have been the injuries, the people. Um, you, you're seeing. It, it, listen, we, we've been speaking earlier, haven't we? It is a cutthroat business. It's, it's a harsh one. Yeah. And I think you have to get your head around that or, or you get swallowed up. So, yeah, it was, it was probably where I was at, you know, at that moment. But I said those conversations quickly. It just stuck with me and it was like, right, let's go. Yeah, let's do that. Mm, and you have. Mm. Um, and it's interesting that even, I think you said, even before you started playing, you thought you'd be a coach yeah. or manager. Yeah, not, before I play, yeah, before I was playing. Then when I was playing, I didn't think anything of it. Probably coaching, like I said, did my badges early and uh, then, uh, yeah, got, yeah. To, got to that point where I was thinking, now I'm going to do something else. Did you see yourself as a leader, as a player, Paul? Um, I was a team player. I know I was a team player and I, I enjoyed what I did. So I, I trained cause, hard because I enjoyed it. Um, I maybe weren't as... Uh, professional away from the training ground you know what I mean and, and games because it's, it's a great job you know there's nothing better than uh, training and playing and then celebrating and it, it, it's a great job when you say it weren't as professional away from it at times yeah uh, if it, you, there's look, a culture isn't there and of enjoyment yeah but there is yeah. in life you've got to enjoy yeah. life and yeah. like I said I was doing something I loved um, you, you get big highs and lows probably more so now man, when you play big highs and lows whether it's a result whether it's a promotion you know, I had an administration and when I played, things like that. So there's big, the, 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 with the pressures that, that come of it, you know, you, you've got to celebrate them and likewise you get some tough moments as well. Um, mm. So, yeah, I, 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 I did enjoy it. Um, I, I, my body packed in before I wanted to pack in, you know, and they were tough. That was tough when you're not ready to step away, regardless if you've got a position to go to, you're not ready to step away because now I'm a footballer, I want to keep playing. So. Yeah. I, I went till my body literally was, was yeah, I, I don't miss playing. Loads of players miss playing and there's nothing but they said, I want to have a five-a-side or come on over. Not a chance. I, I did my bit and I, I know now I went to the point which, which spoiled it a bit for me. Right, well, I've got a list here. Scarborough, Hartlepool. Mm. Well, Manchester United actually was where you, uh, you were a trainee. Yeah. Uh, you can't get higher than that. I mean, mm. I suppose... Broken dreams, really, at, the, at that point. In a no, way. not at all. It's my no. base. I went. I went there because I thought I'd get the best training, in the best environment, and then if I made it great, if I didn't, I'd move on. You know, that, that's what I thought, and that's what my family thought. So it, it really was the best place that it was set up different, and you couldn't sign anywhere to a fourteen. Mm -hmm. You know, schoolboy forms, uh, and uh, they were travelling about all over Ipswich, was really impressive. But as soon as I went to um, to Manchester United, yeah, that was no, oh, I want to sign there. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it was for that reason, it was just a real good environment, the players, the coaches, um, and I thought it'd give me the best start. Sunderland, forgot to mention mm. your first pro contract, um, although you didn't play, I don't think. Scarborough, Hartlepool, don't want to make you tired. Uh, Darlington, Norwich City, Bradford City, Sheffield Wednesday, Barnsley uh, for a, a couple of years. This is playing, by the way. Mansfield, Gateshead, and Harrogate. Mm. I think that's the full, the full list. Um, management. We're going to come and talk a bit more about Sheffield United, obviously, as the <coughs> the show goes along. But um, you have this ter terrific start um, in in management at Bar, which is your hometown club, mm. presumably the club that you you supported growing up. Yeah, season right. season ticket holder at Barnsley. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yeah, always again, it's a little feeling job. I always knew I'd play for Barnsley, you know, and um, it was when I was leaving Sheffield Wednesday. I was actually due to sign at Bristol City. I was going to go down and Paul Strutt pulled me and said, no, Barnsley have, have matched the offer they, they want to take. And I yeah, just went straight in the car and, <laughs> yeah. and, and went and signed there. So, yeah. yeah, it was something I always thought I'd do, wanted, wanted to do. Um, yeah, and we managed to get a promotion then as well that season, which was great. I think it did. I think that did affect me. It was, you know, subconscious. Big, the mental side of it. Any sort of performance is uh, is huge. And it was if uh, after that second season, then when we'd stayed in the championship, which was successful, that squad. That's what. We, that's what our aim was. It, it was if subconsciously, you know, I was thirty then, something like that. As if I'd achieved what I wanted. And looking back now, I probably weren't um, as driven as as I had been previously. Mm. I mean, you, you, your spell in caretaker charge, uh, quite miraculous. Mm. You, you, you got promotion from uh, from League One. I think there was a trophy in there as well, wasn't there? Yeah. In that, yeah. In that season. Yeah, the, the uh, Johnson's paint, which is yeah. a football league trophy. Yeah. That's now something else. It's mm. the uh, Papa John's now, isn't it? The yeah, I was going to say that, that I didn't track. know if it was still Papa John's. So I didn't. Yeah, but I mean, that, that, that was a terrific start. And, um, it, you know, s since then, I mean, you, you, you've had the downs since then because uh, you, you rose to a level that perhaps Barnsley weren't equipped to be in in mm. the uh, championship. Would I be right on that? Or an uh, ownership change? As yeah, well? ownership change was, was the big one. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I never wanted to leave, and there's opportunities to leave, and I, and I didn't want to leave. And you know, I was I was always as much as me and Patrick did argue all, all the time, but it was his club, it was his money, um, and I'd always be grateful for him, you know, trusting me with the job. Um, and, and uh, he then brought me in and, and let me know that his plans were to sell the club and things and, and how positive it was going to be. And I, and I met the new owners. Um, so I, I wanted to stay to see what that was like, to see if we could take it, you know, that little bit further. Because we were, yeah, the budget w was tiny. And we were thinking, right, if they want to do the same methods, which was recruit from lower down, try and develop players, have a competitive team, but acknowledge that you're going to be selling to them, reinvest. and. I was fully on board with that. There was no problem, um, but I thought we might be able to get that little bit more money to to then start buying the better player, the next standard mm -hmm. of player. So yeah, we hung about for that, and then yeah, in, in the first window, it, it became apparent that it wasn't going to be like that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And then they wanted to do things their way, so it was time for me to go. Mm. But and you've had some real experiences in football, not least at Leeds United. We'll, we'll, we'll come to that later. You've been to Scotland and, mm. and managed Hibs. Um, coming on to Sheffield United, um, slightly strange scenario. You know, one manager very, very successful, <coughs> and then a short spell under uh, Slavisha Jukanovic, and you coming in the November. Mm. But of course, you've got a great background in Sheffield United, haven't you? You'd, you'd worked there previously, you'd been caretaker manager yeah. in the. Premier League and some managers perhaps try and change things put their stamp on things and I'm sure you have but you always seem to me to be very conscious of the template that have been successful up until Chris Wilder left yeah I, I think it certainly helped um, it, I'd worked with the players in the Premier League as you said and we, we yeah. did have to make changes it and we were speaking about experiences in in management and and, and playing and all those experiences, you'd be, you're foolish not to learn from any of them. And certainly in management, going through changes in ownership, having successes, having failures, um, whether they are actual failures or not, but they're perceived to be because of the, the context within which you work and all these different environments you're working in. If I hadn't have had all that, that Premier League season when um, walking into that, it, the, the club was it was flat it was it was a tough place yeah. so um if i hadn't have, if i hadn't have been as experienced like i said with the good and bad that could have easily swallowed someone up and that's not to say i did a brilliant job by the way but it, it just led me let me just be relaxed about it and, and approach in a way right well what can we affect now what can we change the biggest thing was the staff and the players and the morale and um, getting the environment right and then we did slightly change formation with the three up top because of the personnel and when we managed to get results and the boys enjoying it, they began to show what good players they are again. So I think the position we're in now, um, 
I think it, it helped. It's probably helped the players more than me, you know, because a lot of them players I didn't know. I'd managed against them, but mm. never not worked with them. No, there's plenty of leaders in that uh, dressing room. And, you know, they serve Chris Wilder well. Mm. And it strikes me that they're doing the same for you. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I think uh, that's been a big part of it. I think Chris was the he, he dragged the club from there to there, without a doubt. Um, and then, so I think when the club suffered, um, and obviously Chris left. Everything was flat, so it's about, I think, giving a bit more ownership and, and expecting a bit more leadership from the players. And bit by bit, we've got some real good experience in there who's mm. had success, not just at this club, but but in everywhere they've been. Um, and giving them that voice and making sure they are clear that it's not just about the 90 minutes on the pitch. It's how you behave around the training ground when you're with the other players, when you're with your teammates. Because it's not the best 11 players that win; it's the best team, isn't it? So. What are you doing to help your team? What are you, what are you doing to make us better as a group, to make the club better? And yeah, there's certainly people stepped up. Mm. What must have been particularly difficult was the start you had. You go to Leicester. Um, I think Chris had only left a few days before, and you concede seven uh, down there. And not my team. That, that's not mine. You can chalk that off my. Uh, yeah. No, I yeah. listen. I, I say it with I say it with a joke, but I, but I'm serious. The, 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 how everything shaped up. Mm. That day was an absolute shambles and a, and a disgrace from from the two how everything was managed uh, in Chris's departure. Pff, it, it, it was it was a shambles and people know what I think about that. Um, and I wasn't going to do it. I was actually even though I've been told I was sat at home the night before mm. having a takeaway with a wife with the phone. The mask has got down. I'm like no chance. This has been a, it's been a joke. Um, and it was only right at the death the next morning when I had my. Uh, job in the 21s, which I wanted. That, that was my job when I had that yeah. protected, um, that I agreed to go down. Um, because I wasn't going to be anyone's fall guy or anyone's as much as my duties to the club, and it was in that position. Yeah. No one had filled me with any confidence that they were in control of the situation. So I weren't going to step up and be in control of that until I knew what, what the, the outcome was going to be, what I wanted. Mm. But nevertheless, it must have been very difficult for you to handle. I mean, was there no, I didn't feel for me. No, I weren't. Human nature. No, I weren't my team. I felt for the players. Yeah. I felt for the players. Um, yeah, I, I did. It weren't. I weren't bothered about me being in that situation. Someone had to do it for him, and I wasn't. It, it was a reflection of where the club was right then, you know, when yeah. things had been handled. And I, I was thinking, from the point of view, you, you were the man in the firing line after being asked the questions, and yeah. you, you, you had to appear at press conferences. Yeah, yeah, but, but I, I knew what I was signing up for. Yeah, it was. Like yeah. I said, it was a tough, if I hadn't have had all the experiences, like I said, it, yeah, it, it, it was the, the club, the place, it was flat, it was dead, it, was, it weren't a good place to be. Mm. Um, not, not at all. So. Yeah, but I knew what I was stepping into. That that didn't fade me, but it had to be on my terms a bit. It had to be that, yeah, of course I'll help you out, no problem. Yeah. But I weren't just going to do it. I, I didn't. I weren't chasing being a manager. You know what I mean? No. I came here to do a different job. So. And you were guaranteeing that you could go yeah. back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you see so many people in the game who uh, there was a recent case at Huddersfield, I think, with Danny Schofield. He steps mm. up. And there's no guarantee that, and he gets sacked as manager. Mm -hmm. There's no guarantee he's going to go back, you know, to, to the job yeah. that he's, he's, he's yeah. got. Can I just bring in? And by the way, we'll develop this about Sheffield United. Something that caught caught my eye, uh, and it's certainly very topical. Seven championship managers have been mm. sacked already this season. Might sound incredible, but it's almost become the norm, the way the game conducts itself. I haven't got a figure across the board, but I'm sure at least as many have been fired uh, in, in other leagues, leagues, leagues one and two. And uh, one of those, of course, was one of your predecessors been sacked by Middlesbrough. But you said, and I quote, uh, they will have been judged on events, but they will not have been in control of 50% of things. Mm which um, is quite topical because the perception is that managers are having less and less of their hands on what mm. goes on. Is that your experience yeah, in the game? De yeah, definitely. It was, uh, yeah, and the people get obsessed with the title, head coach, football manager, manager, whatever. Um, I was a head coach at, at Barnsley, was my title, um, but the relationship I had with Patrick, because it was just me and him, and we'd, at one point we had no CEO, no head of recruitment, Patrick and his family. So you can imagine you're a lot more than head coach. Mm. You know what I mean? You're doing yeah. absolutely everything. But that was my title. But people say, oh, yeah, just looks after the team. No. Um, 
and then there's other experiences and, and there'll be a manager experience in this where they are only in charge of picking a team some some managers might have influence from above on picking a team you know mm. um, I, I just think it, so the titles forget the titles it's what the boundaries what's agreed you know um, and then how you manage that how you work that for me the, the most important thing if, if a club wanted to sign their own players sign their own players but let everyone know um, and, and then I will I would work with the players um, but that has to be everything has to be clear and transparent mm. um, and sometimes it's not well, managers very are out, rarely are out front yeah, answering but, questions they can't yeah, ask. very yeah very rarely yeah. Um, so yeah it's it's, it's always like and, and I guarantee of those managers I'd hazard a, the, non, not one of those would have been the the worst performing employee at that football club you know mm. there, there wouldn't have been fact no. Um, so we've got a culture where it's the manager, but just look at clubs where they're, they're constantly changing managers or the managers moving on, and who's employing those managers? Who keeps getting that decision wrong? Yeah. If that culture is accepted within their organisation and that's the way they want to get results, that's fine. But they have to get that. They have to. Everyone has to understand the role they're playing in that. I think you said as well the other day that nobody says anything about it, and I, I, I would certainly. I look at the League Managers Association, and I, I wonder why they appear to be silent publicly on the mayhem, the managerial mayhem that goes on. And I we, wonder if more could be said no, or should you, be said. You, 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 we accept, we know, you, you're my sure you know the situation, you know. Um, and, and I think your job's to work with it. But, so I, I'm certainly better working with owners, with people at the football club, with, with uh, board members and respecting their position it's their club they can do what they want i'm an employee but if i know all the information and, and someone's willing to share as much as possible with me then i can advise i can i can help if, if i'm in my position and, and i've only got half the information and you ask me a decision i'm going to give it based on what i know which might not be everything so who's to say that's right or wrong likewise you could be a manager and, and you're not involved in any of that and you're just picking a team um, where would you place yourself at the moment in, the, in terms of that at Sheffield United? Yeah, heavily involved with all, with all people, yeah, with all people, lots of conversations, um, we, and, and it's healthy. You don't have to agree, you don't have to all be on the same page. You all want the same outcome. Um, but I, I just say that my job is to protect the team all the time, you know, and that might not always be aligned with who controls the purse strings, you know, and things like that, but that's my job. Someone has to speak up for the team and someone has to give the performance a, opinion. Um, mm. Because ultimately, regardless of the situation you find yourself, that's what we're in. E increasing shirt sales by 20%, selling 20% more season tickets, bringing in 50% more in, in advertising. Is that really going to change the club? It's going to make you millions, couple of million. You know, mm. getting academy players into the first team, tens of millions. Yeah. Developing, signing players, selling players, tens of millions. Getting promotions to Premier Leagues, what? hundreds of millions. So. Let, let's be clear what what's what good it is. for you is good for the owners, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, it, it is. Yeah, uh, and then yeah, I have that dialogue. But at any point, you know, as a manager, that that can change. You don't have to be involved in that. It's up to yeah. it's up to the ownership if they want to bring it into those conversations. Are you manager or head coach? We're just coming to the break. Yeah, I think the title of football manager. And again, there were a big yeah. thing made about that. And the and I probably I'm like say because of the conversations we have, I have regularly with the chairman with Yusuf. Uh, with board members, with, with Prince Abdullah. Okay. I'm involved in a lot of it. Manager. For my money. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a break for literally a couple of minutes. Back with Paul Hackingbottom after that. Rejoin us.